in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 7. Jesus said, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority, and not as their teachers of the law. Jesus knew that it was important for the people then, and for people now, to learn from him. They and we need to be able to apply his teaching to our lives because, let's face it, there are many times throughout our lives when the rain, streams, and winds of this world come to attack us. Jesus wants to make sure that we can withstand them, stay on the narrow road, and enter the small gate. What storms have you been weathering lately? Has there been a torrential downpour of physical suffering? Have the headaches and backaches become too much to bear? Is your body seemingly falling apart? Your blood pressure too high? Your sugar too low? Your allergies are more than just a little annoying. The pain is so much and so often that it makes it hard to concentrate and get anything done. And even worse, the only thing that seems to help is medication, whether from the doctor or the liquor store but neither of those really helps you get your work done or live a normal life. Others haven't had too many of those physical problems, but even more painful at times are the emotional streams of water that seem to come in and carry you away from normalcy. You get swept up in your feelings of loneliness or depression, and while you may not have any bruises to show for it, it just plain hurts. Perhaps the person you loved so long is no longer around, either by death or divorce. The bond that was once so tight has now been ripped apart, and as trite as it sounds, your heart may be beating just fine, but it is still broken. Whether the pain is physical or emotional, or both, it makes it all the more difficult when the winds of change bring new problems into your life. Your car broke down. The stuff you do well at work is unrecognized, but your mistakes, no matter how slight, are always brought to light. Your family is falling apart. And according to your brother, you are the one at fault. Has your life fallen with a great crash? Are you at the breaking point and just waiting for when it does? Unfortunately, the bad news is that you and I have to hear again today that our Savior teaches us is that no matter how we build our house, no matter the foundation we set our lives upon, the storms will still come. The baby aspirin may lower your blood pressure and your new hip will soon heal. You are still deteriorating, though, and something else will soon come. Even if you finally find the love of your life or have been able to move on from your loved one's passing, someone else will soon die. A new job may come, but sooner or later one of your friends will disappoint you again. The reason the proverbial rains fall, streams rise, and winds blow in our lives is because there is sin all around us, inside and out. Your body breaks apart because the sin inside you makes you frail. People are unloving because they are by nature sinfully selfish. The world brings problems to your doorstep daily because it is filled with sinful motives. Those storms still come. Until the day that Jesus comes again, you will still be faced with the repercussions of sin, yours and others. Today, Jesus gives us the way to make sure that when he does come again, our houses won't be destroyed. 
He tells us to build on him, the rock, by hearing what he has to say and putting it into practice. When the cancer comes again, dig down deep to your faith's foundation and remember the songs of biblical truth that you memorized from infancy that made you wise for salvation. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. I am weak, but he is strong. Yes, your body is falling apart. Yes, you are weak. Yes, you see things in perspective. How in the grand scheme of things, your life is so small and insignificant, but Jesus loves you. You belong to him. You are weak, but he is strong. Your Savior is so strong that he was able to battle against the powers of sin and death. And for you, he was powerful enough to win. While your body may continue to decay, in his victorious strength, and because you are his, he has made it so that soon you will have a new body, a perfect body in heaven. When you can't keep yourself from weeping in distress, dig down deep to your faith's foundation and find your Savior taking all your burdens upon himself and carrying to the cross, instead giving you his easy yoke and light burden of complete compassion and love. Your Jesus promises that though you may weep for a little while here on earth, he will wipe away every tear from your eye. Soon. You will not be lonely in the company of heaven, in his company, forever. Listen to his words. Be amazed at his teaching. Follow him and his words, and you will withstand anything this world will throw at you. He will keep you on his narrow path, and with him at your side, you will enter through the small gate. Let us pray. Renew me, O eternal light, and let my heart and soul be bright, illumined with the light of grace that issues from your holy face. Destroy in me the lust of sin, from all impureness make me clean. O grant me power and strength, my God, to strive against my flesh and blood. Create in me a new heart, Lord, that gladly I obey your word. O let your will be my desire, and with new life my soul inspire. Grant that I only you may love, and seek those things which are above, till I behold you face to face, O light eternal through your grace. In Jesus' name, amen.